Welcome back, Movie Masters. So today, we're talking about the DJI Air 3 and the Mini 3 Pro, or you could say the Mini 4 Pro. I mean, they're almost identical, but I've owned this one now for a couple of weeks, and I've got to say, I, this, this thing, this is a piece of crap. No, no, it's awesome, but like, compared, compared to this, God. Oh, this was the this was the upgrade that I never knew I needed until I got it. I mean, don't get me wrong, I was fine with the Mini 3 Pro. And I'm sure you're fine with your Mini 3 or Mini 4 Pro if you got one. As I mentioned in my previous videos, that I wouldn't bother getting the Mini 4 Pro because I just didn't think the upgrade between the Mini 3 Pro and the Mini 4 Pro was worth it. And my gimbal on my Mini 3 Pro actually has a little hairline crack, which I've been repairing every now and then, just with a little bit of super glue. But every couple of months, it seems to come undone, and then I get a little bit of shaky footage. So it was finally time to upgrade because the footage just wasn't usable anymore. I had got my hands on the Air 3, and I just gotta say, it is a game changer. One of the things that I noticed the most is how it handles in the wind, the extra speed you get, the maneuverability, and the extra distance and height and quality. So one of the things I noticed straight off the bat was with the new controller and with the new drone, just how buttery smooth everything was. It was like absolutely flawless. It was like I'm playing a video game and there is no shake, no mistakes, no errors. This thing just handles everything. While you still get those high wind warnings, please watch out. I've, I've found that even with the Mini 3 Pro, even with those warnings, never really made too much of a difference. Sure, I'd get the warnings, but I never had it drop from the sky or anything that really worried me. There are, there are no words. So look, if, have you gone from the Mini series to the air? And like, have you been as excited or surprised as me? A few other things I will mention battery life. It advertises you get about 46 minutes. Now, while I will say the runtime probably averages more about 30 to 35, I can say the same for the Mini 3 Pro. It advertises 34 minutes or so, but really you only get about 22. I would generally take off 10 minutes from what they advertise. Another major difference, not that we're meant to be doing it, is when you go into the settings on the Mini 3 Pro, you can take it to a max height of 500 meters. This, 1,000 meters. Yes, twice the height. And if you have the right license and are following the rules and regulations, they're in the right area, wow, 1,000 meters, that is absolutely huge. Not to mention, with the new controller, it has a range of up to 15 kilometers. Now, one of the other features I will mention it has two lenses. So having the ability to zoom in three times as much also is a real game changer. But yes, when you upgrade, it will be classified above the 250 gram mark. So you will have to get your license, but it's worth it. Now there was one little thing about the design of it that I didn't particularly like, and I will go into that. And it's just something that I noticed going from using the Mini 3 Pro all the time to then the Air 3. What I noticed is that with the Mini 3 Pro, when you take out the legs or the arms or whatever you want to call them, you can take them out in any order. So you can start with the bottom first or you can go the top first and neither way does it interfere with you being able to open up the legs. Now with the Air 3, you have to open them in a particular order, otherwise it won't let you pull them out. So, so for example here, I, want to, I wanted to take that out, but I did it in the wrong order. So you have to do, so it's the reverse. So to put it away, I have to go the back legs, then the front legs. Or if I'm doing it the other way, front legs first, then back legs. Okay. Now, Mini 3. It doesn't matter, just it goes both ways. I'm not sure if that's for extra stability. I did like that just because it saved a little bit of extra setup time. Sometimes you forget which way you're doing it. I know I'm being a little nitpicky, but that was one major difference I noticed. Now look, I did do it in the other video, size comparison. 
I know like when you kind of hold them next to each other, they don't look too different in size, but when you hold them in your hand, you really feel and see the difference. It's like I've gone from a small car to a four wheel drive or something. Now, another thing to mention is how amazing the, the new guidance system is. I wouldn't say it's impossible, but it's very hard to crash this thing, as long as you don't have it in sports mode. And I say that because if you're a new drone user, sports mode will deactivate the sensors around the drone and thus make it easier to crash. As long as you're flying in cine or normal mode, it's gonna be really hard to crash this thing. So that's another plus, especially when you're spending all the money to get one of these. So was this worth the upgrade? I totally think so. I'll put some side-by-side -side footage next to each other and you tell me if you can notice any difference in quality. But I will say, noticeably, all these things I have mentioned are more so the user features than the actual features of the quality. The Mini 3 Pro and the Mini 4 Pro still produce 4K, it's just the same as this, great quality images. It's just the usability and handling of this which I like much more, and the fact that it has a three time zoom lens. But with that extra range, you are gonna be able to get a lot extra distance and maybe get some of those shots that you weren't able to get with your other drone. So if you're going through the more pro level, I would highly recommend this. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this or found it informative, hit that like and subscribe button and keep on movie making.